What's up, Brain Wavers? I know our main content this week was a little bit of a re-recording of some old content, but I didn't want to leave you all without something to chew on this week, so uh, I figured now might be a pretty good time to weigh in on something, give my opinion on a somewhat controversial topic that I've seen coming up kind of a lot recently, and that is remote work or return to office. It's the the hot topic right now. There's a lot of companies that said they're going to be a lot more strict about their return to office policies post Labor Day, and here we are post Labor Day. Uh, and I have somewhat strong opinions on whether or not we should all be forced back into an office setting. Now, let me start by saying there are absolutely jobs that must be conducted in person in an office. I understand that, and those people should be in an office setting. There are, however, many jobs that do not require physical presence in an office for any reason whatsoever, and those people should absolutely be able to work from wherever they see fit. Now let's take a little bit of a dive into some of the reasons why some of these CEOs are wanting people back in an office space. Number one, they talk a lot about your water cooler talk and your hallway conversations leading to collaboration, innovation, new ideas. And that's true, that can happen. But in my experience, the number of conversations that I've had with people in an office that are not at all work-related and lead to absolutely nothing but social interaction is far greater than the number of times that we've actually solved a complex problem by chatting over filling our coffees in the kitchen. And the downside of those conversations in an office setting is that sometimes they happen when you're in the middle of trying to get something done. Someone will come up and they'll say, hey, you want to go get a cup of coffee? You want to go get a drink? Let's go for a walk. And that interrupts you. Interruptions, breaking context can take anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes to recover from. And there's loads of studies out there that show this. And, uh, and you can look those up and see that context interruption is incredibly expensive. And the more that these little conversations happen, the more these little interruptions happen, the lower your productivity goes. If I'm working from home now, I will admit there are people who work from home that have complex family situations. They've got kids, they've got parents they need to care for, all of these types of things that will lead to interruptions. However, in a much more structured environment at home, you can make sure that you have your uninterrupted focus time to get work done and increase your productivity. I don't understand why we need to be crammed into an office, open floor plans, loud distractions all over the place to try and get one good conversation every six weeks. I think there's another aspect of this that is that comes from a lack of trust. You hear a lot that people are only getting a couple hours of work done when they work from home. And I think that that is a breakdown of management, a lack of trust, and I think not at all backed up by any amount of data. The, the key component in jobs like technology is your production, your output. What are the things that we are getting completed? And if you are getting complete all of the things that you are expected to get complete in a given work day, in a given work week, in a given sprint, if that's the type of work organization that you have uh, at your job, then quite honestly, why should your manager or anyone up the chain care how long you are spending getting it done? If you're getting the work done, you get the work done, company succeeds. If you happen to be able to do that in less time than someone else, more power to you. You get more time to do some other non-work related things. And I don't think that being in an office actually changes that at all either. If a person is going to get a task done in two hours and they get it done in two hours in the office, they'll just go and bother other people to go for a walk or get a cup of coffee and interrupt those people and slow them down anyway. So I think that that's also not a really good argument for getting people back into an office. And I think the negatives of asking people back into an office go beyond just the, the, the open settings, the loud noises, the distractions, all of those things. You're asking people to give up more of their time for the job. That time is the commute time. 
you are asking people to give up some number of hours of their day of their week to get from their home to their office especially now at a time when people have moved farther away from cities where a lot of these jobs are because of the remote work that was available during covid and because of uh, other factors like housing prices increasing they've moved farther away and you are inviting people to take more of their time to get to an office to do the job. And I just think that is incredibly unfair because we're not getting compensated for that time. Now you can say that somebody who's on a salary, they're getting compensated for all of their time. But at the end of the day, the time that is spent in a car, on a train, on a bus is not considered work time to the employer. And so you are not getting compensated for it. And that's time that you were just lost. It's gone. You never get that back. In my case, I live about an hour with no traffic away from the major city where all of the jobs are located. If I leave at a time to be in an office from a normal nine to five hours, it'll take me closer to two hours to drive into the city through traffic. And the same thing is true coming home. It'll take me about two hours to drive home. That's four hours out of my day that I am now spending doing nothing but sitting in a car in traffic. There are much better things I can be doing with that time, such as producing this content for you all, editing this content. Uh, you know, I can be exercising. I can be uh, getting chores done around the house. All of that commute time cuts into the time that I have for other things outside of work. And I don't think that that's right to ask that when there are really no tangible benefits to people being in an office. We can look at studies that exist uh, that have been done since the onset of, of COVID and the, the remote working environments where productivity has actually gone up in a lot of cases for people who work remotely. And there's just, I don't know, there's no reason for people to be forced back into an office. The last thing that I'll say on this is I have seen in more than one case, CEOs of these companies that are demanding people return to an office don't have data to back it up. They say it's a gut feel that they think it's right for these people to be in an office. I, now, I'm a data-driven kind of person. Uh, gut feel will only get you so far, especially when you are dealing with other people's lives, you are basically asking people to make major life changes, whether that's giving up many hours a day in commuting time or moving, uprooting their lives to get closer to one of the existing offices. And you're making that decision based on a gut feel and no data or evidence to back that up. I, you might wanna reconsider that decision in my opinion. Anyway, that's it. That's my opinions on working from home versus returning to an office. I think there's no value in being in an office in almost all cases. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks again, as always, for listening. and We'll see you next time.